Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to my talk. I'm, uh, uh, my name is Masako Sawada, and I for work for NTT, and I came from uh, Tokyo, Japan. And in this session, I'd like to talk about transparent data en encryption in PostgreSQL. And this feature is uh, kind of a um, new type of uh, built-in encryption feature in Postgres. Postgres. And I'm proposing this feature to uh, Postgres hackers. And uh, the feature is under the discussion uh, right now. And in my talk, I, uh, the, my talk fo focuses on the mainly uh, Postgres, uh, Postgres internals and uh, my proposal of TDE. And before getting my, into my propo uh, proposal deeply, I, let me explain about the basic database security and, uh, and the security threats. And database server is uh, always in uh, danger of many security threats. And there are many security attacks. Like, uh, for example, um, database SQL injection attacks and the storage meter theft and eavesdropping attacks between client and server, the many uh, security threats. And the encryption <coughs> is the most the famous uh, security solution to, uh, to protect the data uh, stored in the database or server from being revealed. For example, when the disk theft uh, or eavesdropping attacks and database data could exist on the everywhere. For example, on disk, data is, uh, exists on disk, and on DLAMs, and CPU cache, and even on networks, and application server. The security threat we, that we can protect uh, completely depends on the how and uh, how and where we protect, uh, we uh, encrypt the data. So for example, if we, um, encrypt the, on network, like for example using the SSL. We can protect the data from the packet sniffing attack. But on the other hand, the data on disk is not encrypted. So if um, malicious user logs in the user, uh, log in the operating system and leads the file, direct, uh, the file directory, so they can get the data. So the point here is that I think um, then we need to consider the what security threat we can need, need to protect. And then we can consider the what the security solution or security feature we need. And to protect the data from uh, disk theft or leading the file directory, so we can uh, use, we can take the way of a data at rest encryption. Data to rest encryption prevents the data visibility in, in, in the event of unauthorized access or uh, disk theft. So that, that is, we can protect the data from attack, attacks by passing a database access control layer. So for example, um, if the OS user leads the database file directory, um, or a malicious backup operator takes the backup and leads the data file directory, uh, we, can protect these uh, we can protect data uh, from these attacks. However, uh, because the data rest encryption encrypt only data on the disk, the data is not encrypted while being used. So data on the shared buffer or data on the network is not encrypted. So that means it does not protect the attacks uh, by malicious privileged user. The, uh, for example, um, the Postgres by user logged in the database and uh, do the select SQL command to read the database uh, the, uh, tables, and they can get because uh, they have uh, they have access privilege to to that tables. Data at rest encryption doesn't protect uh, data from that, th these attacks. And data at rest encryption uh, is often implemented as a transparent data enc encryption, like TDE, because it encrypts the data at very lower layer, like storage, be close to the storage layer. So that can be implemented uh, transparently to the user. So user doesn't need to care about 
uh, which database, uh, which uh, database object is en encrypted. And to use the data address en encryption, so we also, uh, there is another uh, solution to provide the data address en en encryption. So that is, one is the full disk encryption uh, provided by operating system. For example, in Linux, we can use dmcrypt. So that, so what's the difference between the full disk encryption and in database transparent data encryption? I think the difference is, uh, there are two differences. The full disk encryption is completely platform dependent. I think, uh, yeah, I'm sure there are another solution uh, that is not, uh, that is platform independent, but usually the, the, if we use Linux, we need to know about dmcrypt, but if we use uh, Windows, we need to another solution. And through this encryption doesn't uh, protect data from uh, logged in OS users. So even if we use the full disk encryption, uh, the logged in OS user uh, can read the file and get unencrypt unencrypted print text from uh, print text of the data. But if Postgres has uh, it in database transparent data en encryption, it will be platform independent and we can protect the data from logged in OS users. That's very powerful. And another solution to you to provide transparent data en encryption is to use pgcrypt. pgcrypt is actually the set of function providing a set of cryptographic functions. It's very convenient to and I like that, but it also requires the application code or SQL so that they call the pgcrypt functions. It sometimes it's going to be a problem because, uh, for example, when database migration, Japanese customer often uh, ask me the that they want to uh, they want to migrate the deba database from Oracle database to the Postgres. The Oracle database has its transparent data encryption, but Postgres does not have. So that means the cu customer need to modify the lot of SQLs or application code. So that they can they call the pgcrypt functions and the database triggers and the data, database views helps that, but there is a performance problem because the using the pgcrypt the dat database data need to be decrypted every time it's accessed. I will uh, show the performance result later. So in response to many our client or uh, in Japan and the Postgres uh, user in Japan, I'm trying to implement the built-in data at rest encryption uh, to the Postgres core. So my proposal is part table space encryption. The user can create the encryption in every table space and then a uh, user can create the any database object like tables or database uh, or indexes on that en en encryption in every table space. And this database object is automatically encry encrypted uh, at rest. And the point of this uh, proposal is it provides fine-grained encryption object controls. So you then can choose the which object is encrypted or which object is not encrypted which can suppress the performance overhead for the table that need, don't need to be en encrypted. And in this proposal, uh, if we encrypt uh, a table, it's also encrypted its indexes and its toast table and var. Also, it's encrypt other database objects such as the system catalogs and the temporary files. I will talk about, uh, I will explain about system catalogs, temporary files en en encryption later. And the proposal is under the discussion on PGSQL hackers. 
propo uh, proposed by me and the moon uh, work for NTT. And if you, you are interested in this feature, please join to that discussion. And uh, firstly, I'd like to explain about the where and when we encrypt the data. This diagram sh roughly shows the Postgres basic I.O. architecture. Postgres has its shared buffer to share the table or index data among the, uh, all Postgres uh, processes. And um, operating system like Linux has its page cache. And then we have a disk. And the backend processes read the Postgres, uh, uh, read the pages uh, from the shared buffer and modify them. So my, my, uh, makes bu the buffers dirty. And the Postgres BG uh, background writer uh, periodically writes the dirty pages out of the uh, kernel page cache. And dirty pages are eventually uh, flushed to the disk. It's, okay, uh, it's done by uh, for example, check pointer or a uh, kernel thread. Now our proposal is to encrypt the data between Postgres shared buffer and OS page cache. So when, uh, each time, uh, every time we uh, write to the shared buffer data to, uh, <coughs> to the uh, page cache, we encrypt it. And uh, when, uh, every time we read the data, to uh, load the data to shared buffer, we decrypt it. It's, uh, if we configure the correct size or good size of uh, shared buffer, it's less, uh, it's less encryption and uh, decryption. Because, um, for example, if the database fit in the shared buffer, the buffer replacement doesn't happen many times. So it's very good performance. And also, it's, uh, the d this method can protect the data from uh, picking the file on uh, on disk because the data on on the disk is encrypted. So even if the malicious user logged in the OS and read the database file directory, they cannot uh, database data. But it's possibly repeated uh, encryption and decryption uh, of the same data if the database size doesn't fit the shared buffer. This is a performance evaluation result. Uh, the left side of the graph shows uh, the database size fit in, fit in the shared buffer, but the right side doesn't fit. And the blue line shows the post, uh, normal Postgres. And the yellow line is Postgres with TDE. I made a POC patch. And the red line shows the PG crypt. As you can see on this result, uh, in this evaluation, there is no big performance overhead, even if, even we uh, even if we use a TDE, and even if the database size database does not fit the set buffers, yeah, it uh, depends on the workload and the uh, uh, shared buffer size and database size, but. Um, in my evaluation, um, there was at the most several percent performance degradation. And next is how to encrypt. Ah, yes, please. Um, yes, yes. Okay. So there is. Um, Database size, uh, database size is the less than shared buffer, or, but the higher than, uh, ah, not sure. Um, yeah, database, the all, uh, database, database uh, is on, the, on the, the page cache. So it doesn't happen any uh, disk I.O. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? So next is the how to encrypt. Um, the two encrypt 
encrypts the database data, I, I, I'm going to use the AES, advanced encryption standard, which is the, the symmetric key algorithm. And I'm going to use AES 256. Uh, yeah, uh, the AES has several key lengths, but the 256 is the longest the key lengths of uh, AES. And AES is a block cipher mode, uh, block, block cipher, and each block size is uh, 16 bytes. And like PGCrypt, if we use the OpenSSL to use uh, to encrypt the data uh, by AES, it's very powerful because OpenSSL use the, can use ASNI. ASNI is a special CPU instruction set to encrypt and decrypt by AES very speedy. So that's very, uh, that bring us a very good performance. And we also need to uh, consider the which block cipher mode operation uh, should be used. The CBC and, or, and the XTS are often used for a disk en en encryption. I'm going to use XTS for uh, data, for data en encryption. Uh, next is uh, en encryption key. Uh, encryption key management. The two-tier key hierarchy is a very um, proper solution for faster key rotation. Two-tier key hierarchy uses two types of keys, master key and uh, table space key, or data key. And uh, we have one master key for a uh, database cluster, and we have table, table space keys per table space. And then master key sh must be stored outside of database. And a master key is used to the en encrypt the table space keys, which is stored in the inside of the database. And a table space key is used to the encrypt or uh, and decrypt the actual database data. So two key, key hierarchy shows its value when the key rotation the key rotation is very important because, uh, for example, uh, the some security standard like PCI DSS requires the periodically periodical key rotation. So when we do the key rotation, what we need to do in two tier key hierarchy is to rotate the master key and uh, re-encrypt the table space key with new master key. So that means we don't need to uh, access, that we don't need to uh, modify the database data. And the table space keys are very small. Key size is 32 bytes if we use AES, AES uh, 256. So key rotation will complete within a second. It's very fast rather than we uh, re-encrypt re the database file. And uh, Oracle database and MySQL database uh, provide the TDE, and uh, they also use this uh, hierarchy, two tier key hierarchy. And key management is very important. Um, we store table space keys inside of, of the database, but we must store the master key outside the database. And to store the master key, uh, we can use key management systems. Key management systems or key management servers are dedicated software or services to manage, manage encryption key very robustly. And there are several key management system or p key management servers provided by some companies. Like, for example, uh, AWS KMS or Gemart Key Secure and Oracle Keyboard. And each solution provides, or each solution supports the different protocols. The most, uh, most famous protocol for key management is uh, KMIP. But the some, uh, some systems supports only HTTPS or uh, PKCS 11. And key management system provides uh, robustly key management. So it's very good. So user can leave the key management to them. 
if we seamlessly uh, integrate Postgres with key management system, it's very uh, powerful because the master key is manage, managed by the KMS robustly, and the VA don't, don't need to uh, care about the key management uh, key life cycle. So that's why I, I propose to integrate the Postgres with uh, key management systems. This, this uh, diagram is the, uh, shows the, the rough design after uh, we have a key manager module in Postgres Core. So because each uh, key management system supports different protocols, I think the programmable architecture or extensive architecture works here uh, in this case. And the Postgres has a buffer manager and a storage manager and uh, maybe I s uh, buffer manager and storage manager and uh, maybe we we have encryp encryption uh, module and the key manager manager module is the new module I will uh, I add added and the key manager uh, manages the two types of keys the, the table space keys and the master keys and also it manages the key management plugin. So let me explain briefly the startup sequence of key management modules. When Postmaster start up, um, the key manager get the master key from the external services via um, key management API, like get key API. And it store the master key into the shared memory. And after that, every Postgres server uh, could access to the encrypted tables, uh, need to uh, read the encrypted table space key that's stored on the disk. And they decrypt uh, the tab encrypted table space keys with, with a master key and table space key is uh, stored into the local memory. <coughs> and every, proce uh, every process, uh, when the process uh, need to access or uh, decrypt or encrypt the table, uh, they can use the table space key stored into the, that's stored into local, local memory. In this architecture, we cache the keys especially for the recache the master key in the shared buffer. The so caching the master key on the shared buffer uh, could be a risk of key leakage. For example, when memory dump, the memory dump could have a master key data. That it's not good, but we can pre prevent that by using the ML device, uh, M a D V don't dump plug so that the memory address that stores the master key uh, doesn't uh, uh, is not dump is not included in the uh, memory dump. It's very uh, good solution. And caching the master key on the shadow memory is uh, also could be a risk of key leakage when swap out. So when operating, si operating system uh, swap the out uh, the shared memory to the, to the sh swap area, that uh, the data could be written to the disk. It also uh, can be a risk. So to prevent that, I think we can use MROC to, uh, to prevent the data from uh, being swapped out to the swap area. And after the master key is cached into the shared buffer, so backend process or every process, every possible server process get the get the, the encrypted table space keys from disk and decrypt all of them using uh, with the master key. And next is the wallet encryption. The wallet 
also could have user sensitive data on the table data. So we need to encrypt WAR. And I think there are two possible approach to encrypt WAR. The first one is encrypt each WAR blocks. The second is each WAR, uh, encrypt each WAR record. In the first approach, so if we encrypt the WAR blocks, we insert WAR record uh, into one buffer and then encrypt and write the, to the disk when writing to the disk. In this approach, it could require to encrypt WAR data every commit time. It's uh, relatively not good, but the encryption can be uh, performed by asynchronously by WAR writer, a uh, WAR writer process. And in, if we, uh, the, in the approach number two, if we encrypt the power record, uh, we encrypt the data uh, when inserting to the word buffer. And when we writing to the uh, word to the disk, when just write. In this approach, uh, backend itself always need to encrypt the word when inserting to the word buffer. Um, uh, but it doesn't encrypt the word that is not pertaining to encrypted tables. In terms of uh, security, it will be more secure if we use the same encry encryption key for our encryption as that uh, used for table. So that, that, that is, if we, use, uh, if, if we enc encrypt the table with uh, table space key A, we also encrypt the, the var using the same key. It's more security, um, or more secure. So given that we use the same encryption key. Uh, only approach number two uh, seems to be uh, possible. Because when writing to the uh, disk, uh, writing the word, buff, uh, word buffer uh, to the disk, uh, we cannot find out what data exists in the word buffer exactly. So I'm going to use an, uh, approach number two, so encrypt word record. But I also compared them in terms of performance, so between uh, number one, uh, one the first approach and the second approach. I have, uh, I, I benchmarked the, some performance uh, test uh, with uh, using the several post-OS configuration. And in this uh, performance evaluation, I located the PGWAR uh, directory to the temporary FS in order to avoid the eye of the neck. And uh, for uh, the graph, the y-axis shows the ratio of the execution time of normal Postgres to the execution time of encrypted enabled Postgres. And the four blue, uh, blue bars in this graph, and the from left side, the most left side is the uh, normal Postgres. And the next one is the Postgres with uh, encryption, and it's encrypt the uh, word block, each word blocks. And the next is the Postgres with encryption, and it's encrypt the uh, power word record, each word record. And the next two graph, uh, two bars shows the employees the word record encryption, but it's only half of word is encrypted, or one fifth word is encrypted. And, uh, and the workload is insert heavy workload. Uh, each transaction insert a few records and a commit. And uh, as you can see on this result, um, the performance degradation uh, 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 in this ev evaluation, performance evaluation, uh, there was at most 7% performance degradation. And the rest encryption has a good performance. This performance degradation uh, might be uh, big, but it's not common use case because I located the PGVAR directory on TempFS. So if I locate the, the PGVAR uh, directory the on, uh, on the hard HDD, hard disk, 
there is no big performance overhead. Even if we encrypt, uh, even if the Postgres encrypt the tables, data, and the words, there is no big performance overhead. So the conclusion, uh, uh, th this means uh, the encryption overhead is very small compared to this I.O. of while write, uh, writing. So conclusion here is that we can ignore the wire encryption overhead in the normal use case, very common case, regardless of these approaches or wire power record encryption or power wire block en encryption. But in the future, if we write the wire to the very fast storage, like for example, persistent memory, uh, we might need to consider the wire encryption overhead. And the in world record encryption, uh, we also need to consider what part of the world we should encrypt. The world format has been changed at post Postgres 9.5 or 9.6. And this is the example of the update, world of the heap update when world level is logical. World format, uh, world record always start with the header part, header data, which, uh, which consists of a, uh, of a world rec extra record, which is a fixed size, fixed size header, and uh, could have some header data. And the block, block data follows that, which could have a full page image or tuples itself. And finally, main data follows. That could uh, that have uh, little operation, uh, for example, Excel uh, heap update or Excel heap insert or Excel heap delete, and the main data could have uh, tuple data. So, what I want to say is, uh, the user data could exist on the block data and the main data. So we need to encrypt at least uh, two uh, two parts. To encrypt the world, I think there are some uh, method, uh, some strategies, some approaches to uh, approaches. So choice one is encrypt all uh, whole world record. But it's uh, this approach is not good because I think it requires a big change of world record, uh, world format and a big change of uh, the writing the, co uh, the code around writing the world. So I think I, I don't think it's a good idea. So the choice uh, two, the second choice is to encrypt only block data and the main data, and like this. It also need to add a uh, flag to the extra record, which indicating uh, in, it, which indicates that hey, this file record is encrypted. At first glance. Um, this approach is very straightforward and looks good. Uh, however, uh, we need to, we should consider the front-end programs that could read the uh, words. For example, pg rewind and pg -word dump. This UTT command uh, read the not only the header data, but also the main data. So if we take this approach, we need to change these uh, front-end programs so that they can uh, obtain the all, all uh, encryption keys from the external server. So that could be very hard part. So the choice, uh, the choice three is, a uh, third choice is to move the first of the main data to after the heta data, like this. The front end program does, does not read the full page image or uh, the tuples data itself. So if we move the, the, main uh, the first of main data to the heta, uh, just after the heta data, it's very uh, good. And we encrypt the remaining 
the data. At least the front end programs uh, like PG Rewind and PG var Dump uh, doesn't need to encrypt, uh, doesn't need to decrypt var in this format. But I, I'm not sure that it, it's possible to uh, rearrange the war format uh, right now. Maybe there is historical reason. Uh, we have a main data at the very end of the world. I'm sure. And the next is a temporary file encryption. Uh, temporary files also uh, could have user sensitive data uh, because a temporary file here means uh, intermediate query result like sorting, or while sorting, or uh, logical decoding uh, could also uh, spill out the intermediate decoding data to the disk. So we need to uh, encrypt. But the temporary files are written bypassing the shared buffer. So we need to encrypt the individually uh, temporary files. To encrypt the temporary files, I think we can use the something like a disposable key to encrypt the tempor temporary data rather than using temp table space keys. Because um, the temporary file can, uh, can have uh, multiple table data. So we cannot use the table one table space key to the uh, temporary files. A disposable key is uh, generated randomly by backend uh, process before use, and it lives only during the process lifetime. It's not program uh, because the temporary files is need to be read the particular backend. So uh, the we don't need to share the encry encryption key for temporary files there are, uh, among the uh, other backend. But uh, I think one problem in the at the code level uh, that is uh, there is no uniform uh, interface to writing temporary files. So for example, the tuple table slot, uh, which uh, used while sorting and replications, uh, logical replication, uh, each, module is, uh, each module is called the right system core individually. So if we need to uh, encrypt the temp temporary files, we need to modify each uh, module, every module. The patch is proposed by, I think An Antonin uh, from Cybertech uh, proposed to uh, un uniform, uh, for uniform interface to the write the temporary file, which is, which is very good. And the last thing is encryption, uh, system catalog encry encryption. The system catalog is also could have user sensitive data. The one very uh, good example is PG statistics. PG statistics has uh, his histogram columns and most common virus columns that could have a table data. And uh, in addition to that, I think the PG statistics EXT and PG proc, PG cross, uh, also have user sensitive data. For example, PG proc has a source code of a procedure. And sometimes the table name or attribute name uh, also, you, uh, also could be uh, very sensitive data in some cases. So I think the system, all system color should be, uh, must be encrypted. And in this proposal, I, uh, in this proposal, we can create the encrypted enabled table space. And we can now create a table space to uh, own a particular table space. That means if we create a, the new database on the uh, encrypted enabled table space, the all system catalogs are automatically encrypted. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, this is a conclusion. Uh, conclusion. Uh, in 
my proposal, uh, it's encrypt per table space and buffer level and transparent data address en encryption. It's less performance overhead, and it's also encrypt the wall and system catalogs and temporary files. And it's employ the two-tier key hierarchy, two-tier key architecture for a very faster key rotation. It's very uh, powerful solution. And I also propose to integrate Postgres with key management systems. It provides the more flexible and robust key management, which is often required by the, some security standard. And the, this is the kind of status of uh, the TDE on the Postgres development community. There are two different, uh, uh, different proposals uh, of this area. This, uh, Anthony Hoshka from CyberTech also pro, uh, proposed the cluster-wide data to rest and encryption, which is, is under the development. And I think uh, this is also a uh, good, good uh, future and very uh, simple architecture. And th the next is the um, I and I and the Moon propose the part table space or part table uh, data address encryption. This approach is is uh, uh, trying to uh, provide data address en en encryption, but the the unit of encryption is not uh, is different. the The first approach is uh, encrypt the whole cluster. My second approach is more uh, provide more fine grained control. So I think it's very uh, good if if we uh, if we have more discussion on hackers and pick the good things from uh, each proposals. Yes, please. Ah, uh, yes. And it would do the right thing. I guess, or vice versa, right? If I have a database that is not encrypted and suddenly have to do something special, I'll create a table space that's encrypted and it'll do the right thing. Yeah. Okay. It, it does seem like there's a lot of trickiness of dealing with mostly system catalogs and like the hardest thing. Ah, uh, so yeah, it, yeah. It, it, you then seem like you need a mixed system catalog system. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. The system catalog encryption is very hard part. Um, yeah, I think it's not a problem uh, even uh, if the, this cat system catalog is encrypted or this system catalog is not encrypted because we, uh, we also have uh, encrypted table or encrypt uh, not encrypted table. So it's, I, I think it's the same, same thing. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Could we partition the secret catalog table and have every table space as its own? Um, I guess, that, I guess that, that makes logical sense, but, but so there could be a certain problem there. It's pretty good complicated. Yeah, I mean, anytime you need a system catalog in order to understand a system catalog, it's what you really need to do. So I, I mean, yeah, and there's like certain areas where I see most people. I think it's the hard part is uh, could be uh, uh, global system catalogs. 
like PG table space or PG database, uh, that si system characters are created at in init DB time, and we cannot move the, the table space. So if we want to uh, support that, I think we need to make the init DB to get the master key or encryption key. I think that could be very hard, hard part. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the, the that can more this performance overhead, and uh, that yeah uh, the tape, part table space encryption is more less performance overhead. Oh, so you want to make the performance overhead optional? Yes, and. Uh, my scale supports table space. Uh, my my scale, my seeker. my seeker and uh, worker database has uh, two types of TDE, uh, uh, transparent data encryption. One is the table space, and one is the uh, per column level. And uh, table space uh, encryption is maybe works similar to uh, this. So encrypts to build at very layer level, a uh, lower level. Yeah. So it's just like a, this group of tables will be replicated. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we do something like that for encryption, right? So like encryption group. Ah. Uh. It would be logical, mm -hmm. and it would be completely unrelated to table space or something like that. So like, I, I see table space as not being the right up. Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, I see. Because then it, it's, it seems to make sense if you've got one big file, you control whether each file is encrypted or not. It sort of makes sense on those systems. It makes a little bit less sense on our system, I think. Uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I think that's not the hard part, right? The hard part is the global shared stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's the global shared stuff yeah, where it's like you're tracking some tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Like more or less like what you check, right? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it happens at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I'm thinking to uh, provide uh, the the story, uh, we encrypt the storage manage storage manager layer. So uh, even if we uh, we have the heap, uh, the it's. If it uses a shared buffer, <coughs> the data is automatically uh, encrypted. Uh, I'm thinking uh, the key is stored into the print uh, print text file, like uh, yeah, and, uh, after being enc encrypted. And PG, for example, PG based backup backup, including the table space keys. Uh -huh. And but the master server and the uh, uh, standby server need to uh, connect the same uh, key management system to get the ma same master key. Okay, so key rotation is not done inside the database. Uh, yeah. It is Yeah. So, so this is probably a really stupid question, but when you're decoding this stuff, at some point in the wall, the key changes. How how is the guy that's well, decoding that's, this? That's, yeah, that's that's fair. Like, well, I think if you have the master key, you can get the uh, you could get the key yeah, yeah, that's the idea. The old one and the new one is yeah yeah. So there's a deal with the chain. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the replication element has to deal with the key and how you change the master key. Everything that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we need to uh, have something like CKS number uh, for key generation like that, and uh, just should be uh, like written to the control files or checkpoint records. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that so way. Be a wall record, you're saying, and now we the key. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So f when key rotation, we also need to uh, write the wire that yeah we rotated to, and the uh, CKS number is implemented and yeah. something like that. Uh, uh, yeah, the we marked the buffer. This buffer is encrypted, but ah yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, yeah. I I don't have uh, not make have uh, the which key is uh, used in the buffer. Uh, yeah, but I, encryption key is not changed. Uh, a table space key is not changed unless it's dropped. 
because, uh, for example, when even when the key rotation, the uh, decrypted key table space key is the same, is not changed. Just, just a key. Oh, sure. Yes, just master keys rotate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any question? Uh, what is already time? Yeah. Thank you.